So it's not so long since we last had some cattle over here on the farm. The area that I'm standing in used to be a crowd for the cattle. It's where they used to stay. Now in the background you can see that that used to be the shed for the cattle. Right now if you look around you can clearly see that we no longer have any cattle around. You can see that the grass has grown and it has been properly maintained. Take a look at the grass. It's nice and lush and very short and probably get closer. Yeah, Nice and short. Over there we have our store on the farm and over there we have our feed mill. Um, not quite as clear as I would want it to be but yeah you can see it. That's our feed mill, that's where we process our feed from and if I could move closer you could see that they are trying to load some feed onto a tractor um, in the distance. Yeah, That's to go and feed some other chickens. It's quite early in the morning and you might wonder how this grass here is maintained. It's maintained by the ship that we do still have on the farm. Let's move over there so you can take a look. You can see that we still do have some sheep manure over there in the distance. Um, that's very, very good fertilizer. Awesome fertilizer. This is the goat and sheep area. And you might understand that we got rid of most of the sheep and goats on the farm, but not all, yeah? So we had about 800, but we only got rid of um, about 700. Probably remain with about a hundred or so, but then inevitably over time they start reproducing, especially the sheep. Let's get in. The sheep reproduce really, really quickly. Really quickly. So as you might see, here you can see it's mainly sheep. We have just a few goats, you know. If I zoomed in, you could see. We have just a few goats, but mainly sheep. And they are starting to reproduce again. And for us right now, sheep are not like the main business. No, they are not. Uh, they are good to have around because once in a while you can kill and eat one. Um, or for other reasons, you can have some of them around. But the idea is that we want to get really, really good breeds of goats and sheep. And that's what we're going to be breeding for the commercial purposes. But hey, you remain with 100. In a short time, you're going to be up to 200, 300, 400. So again, when the numbers do multiply, we're going to sell them again probably sooner than we did last time because we don't want them to get to you know 500 800 without us getting in the good breeds now we would love to get in the really really good go breeds for both the goats and the sheep but most of our attention right now is on the poultry you know trying to make sure that the poultry is up to point and everything is up to point so because of that we try to reduce on the numbers of the sheep that you might be seeing over here and the goats and the cattle. For the cattle, we are basically down to almost zero. We just have a few calves that are grazing in the outside paddock area, but we got them out of the area which we are working on right now. So let me take you there. So that over there, like I said, used to be a cow shed. But right now, we are converting it into a poultry house because we are expanding our poultry on the farm. The place has been empty and clean for quite some time, so we're not worried about disease. As you can see, the grass has started growing. It's kept short by the sheep and the goats, yeah? So they occasionally come here and feed on this grass. And so they keep keeping it short. It doesn't grow into a bush. And um, as you can see over here, we have a mixer, yeah? sand or concrete mixer that you can see here that uh, we are using to prepare some sand and concrete in order to build the house as you might see so let's get closer so before we decided to use the house of course we didn't have any walls on the side and it was purely maram on the inside of the house you can see it was purely maram but now what we did was to level it out it was leveled out and then extra support in terms of pillars like this has been added now this one is quite old this one is not just new it's probably a few years old but then a few other extra ones have been added in order to ensure that the whole structure is supported nicely you can see it already did have a roof and then it has i would say a stairway right here 
So this is certainly going to be um, blocked off. The other birds don't need to move from up to down and the feed and everything don't move from up to down. So there will be two different sections as you might see inside here. And of course there is nothing like concrete inside here but that's going to be put later on with time because we still have at least a month until the birds come in. So I'm going to have to do some screeding on the inside here and then you can see the walls. Yeah, this is something I always consistently talk about. You can see the walls. The walls are only less than two feet, in fact. Yeah, all you need to ensure is that the buds, the wall is above the level of the back of the buds. I.e., when the buds are moving flat inside here, they can't see outside. Then the rest is aeration. The rest is aeration. The maximum this needs to ever go to is three feet maximum three feet two feet perfect so all the rest needs to be space for aeration and this is perfect so what you're going to do is that you're going to put a chain link you know here chain link um material just like that fence over there you see that fence over there yeah that's chain link i think i can see it here yeah so this is part of the chain link we're going to be putting i want to put it over here so it moves from down all the way right to the top and then inside that, there'll be chicken wire. That will ensure that the animals don't get out, you know, the chickens don't get out, and the others don't get in. And then this area is simply going to be dedicated for brooding. So we shall be doing a lot of our brooding in here, yeah? We don't brood from other areas. We just do, you know, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight weeks maximum inside here. And then the birds are moved to their permanent houses. Also, at the top, you can see that we have a ridge, a ventilation ridge. At the top but that's going to be removed the ventilation ridge at the top of the house would actually be a perfect thing the only problem is that due to the location of the farm and where we are the winds here are too strong too too strong and so because of that it doesn't matter how steep it is i've seen the winds draw up water on a vertical line ideally on a vertical line and the water gets in so because of that we really can't afford to keep the ventilation ridge. I do believe that the ventilation that we do have on the side is quite good enough. The walls are high enough. The roof is high enough. It's very cool inside here. It's, it's quite bright outside, despite the fact that it's still morning. But I don't feel a lot of heat. Yeah, It's hot. Honestly, if I stood in the sun, I would be feeling the heat. But I don't feel a lot of heat under here because the ventilation is perfect, number one. Number two, it's going to be used for brooding. Yeah, It's going to be used for brooding. So you're not too worried about heating yeah the birds do love heat when they are being brooded so that, that's not going to be an issue ideally but the best thing is that the ventilation is perfect as you've already seen on the sides yeah the ventilation is perfect so of course there's still quite an amount of work that's going to be done here on this house you can see that we have a gate right here this will have to be blocked off and then the other thing that's going to be done, like I said, we're going to be doing screening, but we are going to have to do a lot of preparation for the broiling. After, after we've finished screening the floor and we've separated it into two different halves, the other thing that we're going to have to do is to put the piping for the water, yeah? Because we have to make sure that we connect the water piping system and then the feeder system for the birds to ensure that they are comfortable and that they are not stressed. And of course, you can see that they have been doing some plastering on the walls over here. But if you're building your chicken house, this is not very necessary if you're on a tight budget, yeah? This is certainly not necessary. As long as you, you see what they have done on the outside, yeah? This is good enough, you know, to ensure that the cleaning is good, the surface is not very rough. You can do this and just make sure that the inside too is exactly like that if you do that for both sides then that's not an issue because you want to save as much as possible so you cut the cost make sure that it's clean uh, it's well finished that way the cleaning is quite easy you know you can just use a pressure washer you don't have too many crevices where dirt can hide then you can just do that and then build all the way up that way you save quite some amount of money and you you're not worried about spending too much on building a chicken house because you know the feed is going to be really expensive the birds themselves are going to be expensive so you don't want the construction to be too expensive you can always finish it up later when the money starts coming in but at the beginning you want to save on that so yes as you can see it's quite a long house 
right from the beginning the other side all through to the end and it's going to be used for brooding so uh, we are pushing on with it we are pushing on to get done with the work and in maximum a month's time we're going to have our layer parent stock inside here right there in the distance I don't know if you can see it we have our storied you know you can see the the farthest truth in the distance that's why we keep our layer parent stock uh, the breeders that we are using uh, for our layers but part of the flock is going to be culled very soon because its time has reached yeah you know its time has reached so we need to prepare and bring in a new flock to be able to replace that so that we can consistently supply our farmers when need be so yes i know it's been quite a while since i last uploaded a video a lot of work going on on the farm and it's important that we ensure that the quality of what we provide doesn't fall down so i'm doing everything that i can to ensure that the farmers outside there can get the best yeah of course there is a few challenges starting out here and there but it's okay everything gets ironed out at the beginning it's all about learning from your mistake and making sure that you correct them and that things are better the next time yeah so don't forget to hit that subscribe button of course i'm going to try to make sure that i have more videos coming up more often um the farm up academy will be going online on first december that's the target date finally we've gotten a date yeah before i would keep telling you guys soon 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 but right now it looks like it's in it's almost certain first December we should have the farm up Academy online and so people will be able to subscribe and get done with it don't forget to hit that subscribe button smash the notification bell that way you never miss out on an upload lots of love bye, -bye.